Shalom, everybody. I am sad this morning because a dear brother in the faith has passed away, Brother Jay Hartman. Brother Jay had texted me just a few days ago and said he and his wife were going to attend our assembly actually today. The day I'm recording this right here is our Sabbath, the last Sabbath of this particular year uh, before the ABIB New Moon. He said he was going to attend our assembly. He asked if he could take us out to dinner on the night before or the day before, uh, before Shabbat began. And then, I don't know, 24, 36 hours later, he had a heart attack. And he's not with us any, any longer. So if you are watching or listening to this right now, say a prayer for his wife, Sister Patty. She is a precious sister. Brother Jay was a precious brother. Brother Jay had recently walked into the Sabbath being regulated by the lunar cycle. He was so excited about it. <laughs> and he was so excited he had to tell everybody. And sometimes maybe he told everybody too much. <laughs> he also had recently thanked me for some other teachings and things that he had learned. I never got to meet him in person. I never got to hug his neck. But I know that I'll see him at the resurrection of the righteous. What I've decided to do is pull a video stream that he did, I don't know, a month or so ago about the Sabbath, where he spoke from his heart. And I've taken out some of the lulls and done some editing to the video to condense it down. So this will be about an hour long. I pray that it's a blessing to anyone who watches or listens. Sometimes people can receive things when they're presented by a different person or in a different way. So I'm doing this for that reason. But I'm also doing this to honor Brother Jay. Uh, he was planning on being with me for Shabbat today. And uh, he's not going to be able to. So I just honor him today. honor his life and what he stood for. And uh, I pray that this is a blessing to everybody. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I've had a lot of things on my heart lately and just felt the need to share it. Um, you know, I, I wanted to talk about my journey. I've, I've been sharing a lot on Facebook about using the moon to help determine the Sabbath and the need for it. And what I wanted to do is kind of share my journey. And so Today, I've, I've spent some time just kind of putting together some scriptures and um, to help people understand that this isn't just something that I, you know, I watched a video and then all of a sudden decided that the Sabbath wasn't on Saturday and I needed to keep it by the moon. I put a lot of time and prayer and study into this and, and it's something that I also want to present so that people that are thinking about the Sabbath can study for themselves. I don't ever want anybody to just believe me because I'm quoting scriptures. I want them to see it for themselves. I want everybody to see that this is just kind of an overview. It's sort of like stepping stones of, of how I came to make the decision about the Sabbath the way I did. You know, the same thing was true when I decided to keep the commandments. I studied, I asked people, I prayed, I, I sought out counsel. The same thing happened when I decided that, you know, through study, that we had a firmament and that the earth was not a ball spinning through space. Anyway, here's, here's a, just a brief overview of my journey to actually using a biblical calendar. So here's, here's some of the, the scriptural evidence that I found. Scripture to support and utilize the sun and moon to determine the seventh day Sabbath. You know, the best way to start anything, any kind of doctrine, is in Genesis. Um, Genesis 1.14, and Elohim said, Let there be lights, plural, in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and to let them, again plural, 
be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Okay. So before I started studying this, <clears throat> there's a couple things that I just read over my whole life and never thought about it. So we have two lights, the sun and the moon. Both of them, according to the Torah, according to the instructions of Yahweh, need to be used <clears throat> not just for years. A lot of people use the sun for the year and, and the moon to some extent. But who teaches the days? So we can actually use the sun and the moon for the day. That's, that's very important. If we're not using <clears throat> the moon, how do we know what day we're on? How do we know that things have not been changed? Our calendar has been changed so many times over the years. And it's meant to confuse. We've been following a Gregorian calendar that gives us planetary days of the week that tells us the day starts at midnight. It, it, it tells us so many things that are wrong and incorrect, that they're named after pagan gods. The months are named after pagan gods and, and named after pagan leaders. And so that was part of the reason that I did my search. I'm like, how can... I trust a calendar that was created by pagans and it was also created by it, the, the origins of it were, were started by Constantine that he actually hated the Jews and he wanted to get rid of everything Jewish in the Bible and basically start a new religion. So let's go back to the scripture. Genesis 1.16, and Elohim <clears throat> made two great lights. See, that's the lights, plural. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. The sun and the moon. Now, here's the other important part of that scripture. The sun and the moon are to be signs for signs and for seasons. This is a very important word, seasons. The Hebrew word for seasons is moed. Moed refers to all of the appointments of Yahweh. That means the Sabbath, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles, Day of Atonement, all of those, all of those uh, festivals all fall under the word moed in Hebrew. So now, <clears throat> That's, that's what I've got written on my thing. Hebrew word for seasons is moed. Moed refers to all the festivals and appointments of Yahweh. The seventh day Sabbath is a moed. So since the seventh day Sabbath is the moed, and Genesis 1.14 says that the sun and the moon are for the days and for the moed, does it not make sense that we have to utilize the moon to determine what day we are on? If we don't know what day we are on, how can we possibly be confident that Saturday is the Sabbath? Now, the Saturday Sabbath has no relationship to the moon whatsoever. It bears no relationship to it. So this is just to start on the scriptures. So let's go over and take a look at another scripture. <clears throat> Psalms 104.19 Speaking of Yahweh, He appointed the moon for the seasons, the moed. There's that same word used from Genesis 1.14. Moed. It refers to all of the appointments of Yahweh. He appointed the moon for the seasons. That means that Yahweh made a special effort. It's like he ordained it. He gave it a special purpose for us to keep track of time and to let us know when his appointments are that were so important. That was the other reason that I started to study this is because I found out when we keep the Sabbath, there's actually, it's a sign between us and Yahweh. 
It's it's a it's he places his mark on us. He sets us aside. It's a day that's full of blessings. And so it makes sense that we want to make sure that we actually have scriptures that back up what 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 day it is, what actual what, what the actual day is. And so, you know, one of the things that I've really appreciated about the Torah community is that whenever I've come to them with questions, they've always had tons of scriptures. They've always had lots and lots of scriptures to back up what I've said. And I, I didn't find that in the Christian church, unfortunately. And but but when I started to observe the Sabbath, started to observe the feast, started to to be obedient and walk out the instructions of Yahweh, when I had a question, they always had lots of scriptures. Now, the problem is when I asked them about there's a statement to support the Saturday Sabbath. And that statement is that there is a a continuous, unbroken count of six work days followed by seven that goes all the way back to creation. And I just accepted that as true. But I started to study and see if I could find support for that in the Bible, and I wasn't able to find that. And so this is why I started studying. I, I wanted to know. I didn't want to just sit in a pew and feel comfortable that I was being obedient because there was a man telling me or people online that were telling me. It made sense to me to study the scriptures. So let's go back. Psalm 104, 19. He appointed the moon for the Moedim. The sun knows it's going down. So we, we use the moon to tell us what day we are on, and the sun tells us when the Sabbath begins and ends. Sirach 43, 6 through 8. The book of Sirach is one that was actually taken out of our Bibles. The original uh, King James 1611, the book of Sirach was in it. Why they took it out, I don't know. Maybe because they want to lie to us about space and they want to make us think that the moon is just a big rock that we don't have to pay attention to. And they didn't like the fact that Sirach had such a detailed description of the moon. So let's look at Sirach. Sirach 43, 6 through 8. There is also the moon marking the passage of time, an eternal sign of the changing seasons. The moon determines the holy days. Its light grows full and grows dim. Once again, it's saying that the moon is saying the same thing as Psalm 104.19. It's saying the same thing as Genesis 1.14. That Yahweh made both sun and moon to determine the holy days. It grows light and full and it, it grows full and grows dim. That's how we know the different Sabbaths. That's how we know the different days. The month is named after the moon. So, I mean, this is right there in the scriptures. The month is named after the moon. You know... There, were, there was a time when people would actually call it the month instead of the month. But it's grown into <clears throat> just calling it the month. But the point of this is that I'm showing that the Moed, which is in Genesis 1.14, is also in Psalm 104.19, and it's also in Sirach 43.6-8. So now that we've determined that the sun and the moon are both for the Moed, we need to know what the Moed is. So now, let's go over to Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 was given to actually show us what the Moed were. We needed to know. Yahweh told us the sun and the moon was for the Moed, so now we need to know what the Moed is. So here it is, Leviticus 23, 1 through 3. The question is, what is Yahweh's moed, or appointed times? 
Leviticus 23, Yahweh said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, These are my appointed festivals, the appointed festivals of Yahweh, which you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies. The very first Moed listed is the Sabbath. There are six days when you may work, but the seventh is a Sabbath of rest, a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work wherever you live. It is a Sabbath unto Yahweh. Okay, so now that we have a basis, now that I've found a basis that the moon is connected to the Sabbath, that was when I really started asking questions. That was when I really started pressing and trying to find out why people believed that it wasn't or why there was a disconnect. So here's, here's the answers that I was given, and these are all pretty standard answers that you will get by those that um, keep Saturday as the Sabbath. <clears throat> so when I sought counsel in support of Saturday <clears throat> being the seventh day Sabbath, here's what I was told. Six working days followed by a seventh day of rest. It's the model of creation. Was kept from the beginning by a whole race of people, the Hebrews and the Jews, meaning a whole race of people were keeping this, this same pattern, six work days followed by a seventh day of rest, all the way back to creation. I was told that it fits the Exodus 16 model where Yahweh gave them the manna. I was told that the Jews of today keep it on Saturday. <clears throat> I was told that there is a continuous count that has been uninterrupted all the way back to creation of six work days followed by Sabbath. Okay, so after I had time to think about this, I thought, you know, these were good answers, but I needed to see it in the scriptures. I, I, I didn't want to just believe it because there was people that I respect that I respected that were just telling me this. So now, for us to have a continuous count that goes all the way back to creation that lines up with a Saturday Sabbath, we have to have two things. There must be only two types of days. Work days and Sabbath days. And there must be a continuous count of six work days followed by a Sabbath that started at creation and continued till today. If we have more than one type of, or two types of days, there's going to be a problem in that. Because if you think about a calendar that you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and six of those are work days, and the next one is the <clears throat> Sabbath, then it's possible that it could go all the way back to creation. So now, let's go see what the scriptures say. Ezekiel 46.1 <clears throat> Thus says the master of Yahweh, the master Yahweh, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened. So what we found is that, according to the scriptures, there is not two types of days, work days and Sabbaths. There's actually three types of days. We have new moons, Sabbaths, and working days. Okay, so now, to illustrate this, I've just drawn up an, a, a couple of calendars so you can look at it. You have your our typical week that just has seven straight days. Work, 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 rest. Okay? But we have three types of days. We have new moon days, work days, and Sabbath days. According to Ezekiel 46, 1, the gate has to be opened on the new moon day. The gate has to be shut for worship on the work days, and the gate has to be open again on the Sabbath days. So now, on a Gregorian calendar, you can look at it, and you can look up new moons, 
the new moon floats all over the calendar. And what ends up happening is, you know, if it lands here on a Sabbath day, well, you can keep that commandment. If it lands on a Sabbath, it was commanded to be open. So it, it actually fits. The Sabbath day is supposed to be open, and the new moon day is supposed to be open. So if the new moon falls on the Sabbath, then you can keep that commandment and the, and the gate be open. However, let's look back at it again. If the new moon day falls on a work day, what do you do? The new moon is commanded to be open. The work day is commanded to be shut. So on a continuous count, you've got a big problem because on a work day, it has to be shut and on the new moon, it has to be open. So there's no way that you can have the gate open and shut on the same day. This would be on a Gregorian calendar. That's the problem with a seven day continuous count. That's one of the problems. When you, you go all the way back to creation, you've got these new moon days that are always going to end up falling. Not always, but more often than not, it's going to fall on work days. So that was my first red flag. You know, there's, there's no way that you can have a continuous count to seven and a new moon day fall on a work day. So these are... Things that I, I've gone and asked, I've, I've, I've tried to get explanations for from not just one, but several, and I, I've never got a, a good answer. So now, let's look at what the biblical calendar shows. The Bible constantly talks about the month, and you know for sure it gives dates, and it talks about months. So you had a new moon day that always started the month. Then you had a calendar that had four weeks of six working days followed by a Sabbath. When I talk to people about keeping the calendar according to the sun and moon, they think that it's a big complicated thing. But the problem with it, the reason it seems complicated is because we're, we're taking a Gregorian calendar that was created by men that wanted to do away with everything Jewish, and then we're trying to force Yahweh's calendar onto that calendar. And so, of course, it would be confusing. And, you know, when I first heard that there was a, a, a calendar according to the moon and that the Sabbaths were on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th, I thought, well, that's crazy because I looked at the Gregorian calendar and it just was this big mess. But when you see that there was an actual calendar that Yahweh used, this is all very simple. You had a new moon day and it was very organized. Where it becomes a little tricky is that you do have to take this and translate it over onto a Gregorian calendar just so we'll know how to follow it. And so the question becomes, is that Yahweh's problem or is that our problem? Did he change or did we change? And so the only way that we can deal with this is by looking at the scriptures and, and really deciding, is there a seven day count that continuous all the way back to creation? The more I looked and the more I asked people, I kept hearing that, and it's a presumption, but, and, and they're very honest, they're not trying to deceive me, but they're thinking that there is when the Bible doesn't support that. The other reason was that it said that the Jews of today keep the Sabbath. First of all, from what I understand, majority of Jews are in Judaism. And I know there's a bunch of wonderful people that are Jews. But if you study Judaism, you realize that they follow the, the traditions of the fathers. And the traditions of the fathers, which were eventually recorded in the Talmud, they've got rules that are completely contrary to the instructions of Yahweh. Here's what the scriptures say. 
You can read all throughout the Bible, and the Jews were constantly being rebuked by the prophets for failing to keep the Sabbath. Matter of fact, I think it was the number one thing. It was, it was like one of the very first things that Yahweh was upset with them about was they weren't keeping his Sabbath. <clears throat> number two, Yeshua rebuked the Pharisees for setting aside the commandments of Yahweh to follow the commandments of men. Mark 7, 8, for laying aside the commandments of Elohim, you hold to the traditions of men. Make uh, Verse 13, making the word of Elohim of no effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do you. So he's not just rebuking them about something specific. He's actually telling them that they do this with a lot of stuff. So the Jews keeping Saturday as the Sabbath is not automatically mean that it's incorrect, but it also does not mean that it is correct because obviously they've, they've been rebuked a lot and they're willing to set aside Yahweh's commandments for <clears throat> the traditions of men. That's what they've done. They've been very consistent at that. And when you study them, you find out that they actually follow Torah less than those of us have just learned it in a few years. It's amazing the kinds of things that, that they agree with. So the, the Jews um, keeping Saturday as a Sabbath is not a good uh, proof at all or a good basis to, to base your faith on. So now, let's look at the, the seven-day continual count again. The March on Jericho. Now what we've learned what we learned from the book of Maccabees is that the Jews would not even fight back on the Sabbath and after they they took heavy losses they later decided that they would actually fight back on the Sabbath but they would not advance and we have no record of the Jews ever advancing on the Sabbath so and it's backed up by the book of Maccabees so now, the March of Jericho, they had six, day, six days of surrounding, and then on the seventh day, they marched around seven times. All right? So my question is, if we have a seven-day continual count ending in a Sabbath, when did they rest? When did they keep a Sabbath? If they marched seven straight days, that means they were in full battle gear. That means they were advancing on an enemy on the Sabbath. There's no way on a seven-day continual count that the Jews could be obedient. But if they followed the new moon, if they were celebrating the new moon, the new moon does not have the strict regulations against <clears throat> working as uh, the Sabbath does. So that means they could march, 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 seven times march, conquer Jericho, and then they could have rested the next day after they conquered Jericho. From what we understand about the new moon, there was no buying and selling and there was no work done. But you could do work that was related to the kingdom. That would have allowed them to march around and they would not have been breaking the commandment if they started on the new moon. The book of Jasher actually states this. It says that they, they started their march around Jericho on the new moon day, which gives them the ability to now rest on the Sabbath. The next question becomes, what is Yahweh's Sabbath? And is it a particular day? Well, and the answer is, of course it is. It's, a, it's an actual day. There is a seventh day of rest, Sabbath, that Yahweh claims as his own. Nehemiah 9.14 says, you made known to them <clears throat> your holy Sabbaths. That means there's a particular holy Sabbath. And gave them the commands and decrees and laws and through, through your servant Moses. Here's the other 
question that comes up. Yahweh made known the Sabbath to the Israelites. One of the things that I was told was that there was a whole race of people that kept the Sabbath all the way back to creation. If there was a whole race of people keeping the Sabbath all the way back to creation, then why would he need to make his Sabbath known to them? Examining the statement of, is there a continuous seven-day count of six work days followed by a day of rest that's unbroken, that goes all the way back to creation? That's a big question. And the March of Jericho shows that that could not have been done and them not go to battle on the Sabbath. Ezekiel 46.1 shows that there's three types of days. That third type of day of a new moon where the gate had to be open would be impossible to keep because the gate would have to be open and shut when it fell on a work day. And on a seven-day continuous count, the new moon floats all over the month and it ends up landing on a work day. But here's something else that's really important that I discovered. When you look at Exodus 16 and the giving of the manna, you realize that there's, that there's two months put together. Exodus 16 states in the very first couple of verses that it was the second month. All right? So what I did is I laid out the first month according to Leviticus 23. We know by Yahweh's commandments in Leviticus 23, his instructions for the Passover in unleavened bread, we know when the Sabbath fell. The 14th was Passover. The very next day after Passover was a Sabbath. <clears throat> and then we have the, that, that Sabbath is a day of unleavened bread, and the unleavened bread is eaten for seven days. And the last day of unleavened bread is the 21st. And the first, the first Sabbath is the 22nd. So since we know that there's a Sabbath on the 15th and there's a Sabbath on the 22nd, all we have to do is simple math and the Sabbath would be on the, the first Sabbath of that month, of the first month of Abib would be on the 8th. And the last Sabbath of the month would be on the 29th. So now, let's go look at Exodus 16 and the giving of the manna. It states that on the 15th day of the second month, that Israel grumbled. Then what happened was Yahweh spoke to Moses, and he said, I'm going to test them. I'm going to give them manna, and I'm going to test them to see if they will keep my commandments. That was on the 15th <clears throat> that Israel grumbled. So, the very first day they were given the manna was the 16th. Second day was the 17th. Third day of manna was the 18th. Fourth day of manna was the 19th. Fifth day of the manna was the 20th. Sixth day of the manna was the 21st. That makes the very first Sabbath that was revealed to Israel through Moses was observed on the 22nd of the month. So, simple math means that the 29th was the last day of the month. That means, going backwards, that the 15th was a Sabbath, was one of Yahweh's Sabbaths. And that means that the 8th was a Sabbath. Okay. So now, now we have two months side by side. We have the first month that was that was laid out to us by Leviticus 23 and the, the instructions for the Passover. And the last Sabbath is on the 29th. So now, we put these two months together and we know that all lunar months have either 29 or they have 30 days. So let's look at them both. Let's assume... Um, that there was 30 days in the month of Abib. We don't know, but we're going to look at both things. If you look at the month of Abib, the very first month, and you had 30 days 
in the in the first month to get to the next Sabbath you now have to count one two which is the first this is the first day of the, the second month one two three four five six if there was 30 days in the month of Abib the next Sabbath if there was a continuous count that went all the way back to creation and there was 30 days in the month of Abib the seventh would be the next Sabbath that fell naturally according to the continuous count now if there was 29 days that would put you a little closer so let's just pretend like this isn't here so 29th would be the Sabbath so the very next workday would be the first, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Now the Sabbath falls on the seventh. It's a problem either way. Whether there's 29 days or 30 days in the month of Abib, when you put these two months together, either way, you don't have a continuous count all the way back to creation. Scripture is actually showing us that it doesn't exist. The other thing that it's showing us is that we have back-to-back -back months, two months in a row, where the Sabbaths all fell on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, the 29th. Same thing with the second month, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. Now, if you have a new moon day in there, it all makes sense. If the months start over with a new moon day, you don't have to worry about this count that doesn't add up. That's what the people that keep the sun and the moon do. They look at the new moon day and then they start over. This would be day one, which is the new moon day. Then the second is the first work day. The third is the second work day. The fourth is the third work day. The fifth is the fourth work day. The sixth is the fifth work day. And the seventh is the sixth work day, ending by a Sabbath. Then you start back over with the ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, and ends in a Sabbath. So now, if you go study lunar phases or a lunar calendar, what you will find out is pretty amazing. You actually have phases of the moon that line up directly with the Sabbaths. You actually have a different phase or shape of the moon that lines up with every day. Remember when I said in Genesis 1.14 that the moon was for the days? Well, you can actually look up and see a different shape of the moon for every day. Yahweh wanted us to know what day we were on. He wanted us to be able to be confident and make his appointments that were based according to the Bible. He didn't want us to have to put faith in a calendar that was created by evil men that wanted to do away with everything Jewish. On a, on a biblical calendar, what you have is a new moon on, on the very first of the month. And that's just a tiny little sliver of light. Teeny tiny little sliver of light begins that signals the new moon day. As we learn in Ezekiel 46, 1, the new moon day, the gate has to be open because that's a worship day. We also know from other new moon scriptures that it was a non-commerce day. Now, work for the temple, Moses built the tabernacle on the new moon, uh, Moses taught the book of Deuteronomy on the new moon, um, so there, there are things that can be done, it's, so it doesn't have the same strict regulations, but the point is you have a tiny little sliver that marks the new moon. The first Sabbath, when you look up, you will see that on, on that side of the moon, the, it's, it's actually the left side of the moon if you're on the moon. If you're standing from the ground like we are looking up, it'd be the right side. So the right side 
actually is completely filled in. <clears throat> then the 15th is always a full moon. The 22nd is always a moon that is half on the other side. So the half that was full over here is now blank over here. And then the 29th, you have a waning moon, which is just a tiny little sliver over on the left side. What I've shown is that by the scriptures, there is no way that there is a continuous count based on Yahweh's instructions from Leviticus 23 and the instructions that were given to us of the giving of the manna. You know, I, I love my Saturday brothers and sisters. I adore them. I'm appreciative because if I hadn't have learned from them, I wouldn't have been able to understand about the feast. And if I hadn't understood about the feast, I would never be able to see this. But the truth is, there's a, a doctrine that gets repeated over and over and over that isn't supported by scriptures. And it's a matter of me wanting to be obedient, my wife wanting to be obedient. You know, back when I first saw that the earth was not a spinning ball barreling through space and we actually had a dome over us, it was one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee the truth. And now that I've seen the truth about this, I have to be obedient. I still love my Saturday keeping brothers and sisters. People have are, are coming out of sort of the Sunday churches where basically all of Yahweh's commandments were ignored and we're all trying to figure this out. And I've always been the type that when I learn something new, I want to go share it with other people. That's, I, that's how I'm built. I do try to make sure that I've got a foundational understanding of it so that you know I, I'm not just butchering it now that I've discovered that there is no support for a seven-day continuous count that goes all the way back to creation there is a continuous uh, type of thing is that there was new moons and work days and Sabbath days and we've seen by the scriptures that it could not exist between the first month and the second month. So this brings me to a, a, a difficult scripture. Deuteronomy 4, 2, it says, Do not add to what I command you today, and do not subtract from it. Genesis 1:14, Psalms 104, 19, Sirach 43, 6 through 8, all say that the moon was appointed for the Moedim, and we don't consider the moon when we're trying to determine what day the Sabbath is. We are subtracting from Torah. We're taking away from the instructions that Yahweh gave us. Then when we say something that there's a continuous count all the way back to creation, I don't that doesn't exist in scriptures and it's not supported anyway in scriptures. I don't see any way else other than to see that it's, it's adding to Scripture. So we're doing, when we fail to use the moon, we're adding to and subtracting from at the same time. And this, this statement is repeated over and over and over again about a continuous count. And so, you know, I think that we've got Scriptures that warn us against that. Ezekiel 22, 28 says, And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, when Yahweh hath not spoken it. Now, do I think that people teaching that Saturday is the Sabbath and there's a continuous seven-day count are false prophets? No. I don't, I don't think that at all. I, I think that... that we've been lied to over the last 1700 years. I think that we've come out of a lot of tradition and Saturday is there and we hear there's a seven day count and we just start keeping it. And so, no, I don't think that people are that are teaching this are false prophets. 
But we have to ask ourselves, when we say something that isn't supported by scriptures, are we not saying something when Yahweh has not said it? Yahweh did not ever say, at least to my knowledge now and all the scriptures that I've searched, he did not say there was a continuous count of six work days followed by a day of rest. In fact, he says in Ezekiel 46.1, Thus saith Yahweh, the gate of the inner court that looks toward the east shall be shut for six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. This brings up the question about new moons, and there's over 20 verses that actually directly refer to the new moon, and the new moons are mentioned in the same breath as Sabbath days and feast days, and so, in other words, they've got a lot of weight. We also have in Numbers, I think it's Numbers 29, is where the list of sacrifices are made. There's, there was actually sacrifices that were do, done every day. And then there were sacrifices <clears throat> that were done on the new moon days. You know, it, it listed off a certain number of bulls and a couple of goats and a couple of sheep. And I, and I don't have those memorized. But what I do know is that the list of sacrifices that were done on a new moon day, if you want to know how set apart and holy those days are, the, the list of sacrifices was actually greater than the list of sacrifices that were done on the Sabbath. And then you go to the next level on his yearly feast, and, and even more sacrifices were done. So... We actually have sacrifices being done on the new moon. We have 20 scriptures that mention the new moon in the same light as the Sabbath and the feast. We also have lots of scriptures that talk about in the beginnings of our months. Um, we have scriptures that say in the first of the month, and all of those are all referring to the new moon. There's 24 different Bible translators that all translated that word there. The word that is for, for new moon is the word Kodesh. And the word Kodesh can be used for just a span of time known as a month, but it also could refer to a specific time and it be used as new moon. And so it's like 290 times the word Kodesh was translated into month, and 22, 23 times it was translated into new moon. And you can go read those scriptures, and if you think there's a mistranslation that it should have been month, go take the word month and insert that where it says new moon. Just go look up all, just take Bible Gateway and pull up all the scriptures that say new moon. And then if you think that it's a mistranslation and it should have been month, insert month in there and then read it out loud and see if it makes sense. I know for sure that it doesn't work in Ezekiel 46.1. Let's look at that again. The gate of the inner court that looks toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be opened, and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. That's the word Kodesh. 24 Bible translators all agreed that this word needed to be translated as new moon. So, if you think that Kodesh, Kodesh only means month, Let's, let's read this again. The gate of the inner court that looks toward the east shall be shut the six working days, but on the Sabbath it shall be open, and in the day of the month it shall be opened. I'm sorry, but you can't insert month in that scripture, and you'll find that there's many of them that you can't. Most of them were they translated <clears throat> new moons, or they translated Kodesh as new moons, 
They had to because it would have been out of context. It wouldn't have fit. There is a little bit of a puzzle to put together when finding the Sabbath. People ask me sometimes, well, what about the moon being created on the fourth day? And that's actually pretty simple to answer. When we go and read Genesis, we often forget that something happened in the beginning. Yahweh created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. That was a space of time. That was a segment of time. Maybe it happened in an instant. Maybe it was a whole day. I don't know. But something happened in an instant of time. Then on the first day, light was created, separating the day from the night. We only determine time by the movement of the sun and the moon. If the sun was not created, it's not going to be looked at as the same day. You also read and you find out that on the six days, he did not create those things. The word made is a saw. He actually advanced upon his creation. So in the beginning, he made the heavens and the earth. And then he advanced upon those things. I like to think of it like, you know, a, a big construction site. And, you know, they, they want to build something on a plot of land. So a manager will order, uh, you know, all of the supplies and, and wood needed and cement. And they'll put it in a big pile. And that'll be sitting there waiting. Yahweh created the heavens and the earth, and then he advanced upon it. Well, a manager orders a bunch of materials, and the men show up, and they advance upon it every day to build the building. The other question is, well, what if the moon was created <clears throat> on the fourth day? That it, Let's say it was actually created on the fourth day. Well, that's pretty easy to answer as well. I mean... Yahweh created man and woman in their adult phase. He didn't create them as little babies. He didn't create the animals as little babies. He created them in a completed, ready phase to do what he wanted them to do. And so if he appointed the moon, and let's say he did create it on the fourth day, it makes complete sense for Yahweh to create the moon in the proper phase to line up with that pattern. <clears throat> I personally think that what he did was, was that this, the moon was actually created in the beginning. But even if you don't want to believe that, that's okay. He, can, he could create it in the proper phase. So, anyway, I just wanted to show everybody that... It's worth taking time. It's worth taking a look into. I just don't think that Yeshua meant for us to kind of hand over everything to, to somebody else to decide. I think that what we need to do is that we need to value our teachers and love them and cherish them. And they're, they're needed, but you can't be afraid to step out and take a look at things on your own. You know, Paul said to test all things and prove all things. I think that that's what I've done with this, is I've tested it. I've found out. I've put the, the seven-day continuous count to the test, and it doesn't stand the test. What I do see standing the test is the moon being involved. We're also told that we're to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, whoever's teaching us is not going to be standing there with us when we face Yeshua. They're going to love us and they're to build us up and they're to help us and all of those kinds of things. But ultimately, we all have the responsibility. Actually open up your Bible and look at these things. Go look up Brother Matthew Jansen's teachings. He's got way more detailed information on this than I have. And I'm sure he'd be happy to send it to you. There's several people out there 
that, that are teaching this in more detail. The purpose is for us all to learn and become obedient to Yahweh. <clears throat> and it just hurts, it just breaks my heart to see things being said that just simply aren't true by people that love Yahweh. And, and I'm not going to um, ever look down or have less respect for anybody that keeps Saturday as the Sabbath. And I think that's, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, we're supposed to maintain the fruits of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit are always kindness, love, giving, um, you know, making others more important than ourselves. And I've never, ever accepted a truth because somebody beat me into submission or really was ugly to me or any of those kinds of things. And, I, and I've never been able to, to get anybody in my life <clears throat> to see um, a truth because I was negative, negative toward them or tried to act like, you know, a, a, some prophet and really rebuke them harshly. That's never, that's never been successful. And I would never do that. And so I just think that we shouldn't do that to each other. I think that we should respect others the way like we were at one time we were ignorant to so many things and yet Yahweh was loving and patient and kind and showed us the truth and usually he showed us the truth <clears throat> by somebody else that cared and loved us and were actually patient with us with what with what they showed us. And if they weren't, I know for me, whenever I had somebody come over and try to beat me over the head with something, I always ran. I always, I always thought, well, if they're acting that way, I don't want to be like them. But if they're acting kind and giving and loving and patient, then I think, wait a minute, that's like Yeshua. And maybe I should look into this a little Anyway, Shabbat Shalom to all the Saturday Sabbath keepers and to all of the uh, those that keep the Sabbath by the lunar reckoning. Um, this happens to be a time when we're all keeping it at the same time. And I just felt it was a good time to share. I love you guys. Bye.